again first Wednesday of the month webinar. It's been a little while since we've had um, a webinar, so it's great to see you here. Um, my name is Beck Pitt. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about results of the UK Open Textbook Project, what, why, how, um, and everything in between. Um, and uh, I'll be taking questions in the chat. So we are recording, so everything in the chat and um, what I'm saying will be uh, in the recording that will be available afterwards. So welcome to you if you're joining after um, uh, this, this session um, actually happened. Okay, so... Um, just to note that this is a presentation that's the kind of collaboration of, of, of different bits of work across the project. We've presented different okay. versions of this um, at Open Ed um, last year and also at Show and Tell here at the Open University um, earlier this year as part of the completed um, project series. So, ooh, wonderful. So, hi, Danielle, welcome. Um, so Danielle, just saying that we're recording this session um, as well, so just to make you aware of that. So um, what I'm going to be talking about is UK Open Textbooks. Um, this was a, uh, a pilot project funded by the Hewlett Foundation and um, involved OpenStax and uh, the Open Textbook Network um, in collaboration with ourselves, um, UWE and um, Wong Kei Chi. Um, and the idea behind the project was to raise awareness of open textbooks within the UK um, higher education context. And it was a pilot study. Um, and we're basically trying to see, um, trying to test two methods, namely that used by OpenStax and that used by the Open Textbook Network to, um, to see whether they uh, translated into the UK context. So um, very successful in mainstreaming um, OER. Uh, and open textbooks within um, the US context, but did that work within the UK context? And we used the kind of metric of adoption um, or intended adoption um, to measure the success of what we did um, uh, during the project. And I'll talk a little bit more on our approach and what we actually did um, to replicate these methods um, shortly. Uh, what I want to do though, so what I'm gonna kind of do as part of this, um, uh, presentation is kind of take you through a little bit of the background um, um, about why open textbooks, a little bit about the UK context, um, and then take you through the, the, the kind of outcomes from the project and some of the things that we found. Um, and hopefully you'll find that useful and feel free to ask any questions at any point in the chat box. Um, uh, so please do that as we, as we go through. So you might ask, why open textbooks? So obviously open textbooks are kind of mentioned, they've been fairly fundamental in raising awareness of um, open educational resources, particularly in the North American context, kind of concerns around cost. Um, there's a familiarity with the format. Um, you know, there's quite a bit of research um, now around open textbook use um, and the impact that they're having. Um, so they've been very successful and also obviously within the US context in particular, um, have Congress support, um, you know, you've got the funding, $5 million um, open textbook grant, um, and so on. So these are all kind of good reasons for focusing on, on open textbooks. But within the UK context, um, obviously we're kind of slightly different um, in, in several ways. So we don't, there's, there's a kind of, in, in HE in particular, um, tend to use reading lists at higher education level and not base courses around. Um, uh, textbooks, um, the materials that we were going to use, so OpenStax particularly, their textbooks, open textbooks are aligned with US scope and sequence. Um, so this enables really super easy implementation um, for folks uh, folks there, but would that translate over into um, the UK context um, if they're not aligned to the UK curriculum? Um, sorry, my email is suddenly... Top there. Sorry about that. Um, and then also we were kind of interested in whether or not there was um, within that kind of context, whether perhaps the UK um, context was maybe an opportunity for more specialised books. And then finally, it's probably important to note that there's currently a real lack of research around this. Um, you'll see that we did some research as part of the project, talk a little bit about a survey that we did with HE educators towards the end of end of our work, um, but there's still a lot more to be done. We don't actually know a huge amount about um, student perceptions and experiences 
um, around textbooks. So all of this was kind of wide open. As I mentioned, there's not a huge amount of, um, this was very much a kind of, uh, the first kind of, project within the UK context uh, trying to look at this this issue and, and kind of replicate these successful methods. Okay, so as you know, um, the situation in the US um, uh, around cost savings is, is not unique. Um, we've put together a little bit of an overview of some of the UK um, national statistics here. So um, uh, the average cost of equipment, and this kind of varies. There's a number of different surveys um, out there, but I think this is from the NUS, this figure. Um, it's estimated, dependent on your subject, obviously, to be um, an average of around £1,000 a year for books and equipment. Um, we've got a situation now where obviously tuition fees are um, exceeding 9000 a year for most institutions. Um, and kind of growing student loan um, debt, which is more than £1 billion um, pounds at the moment, with people graduating with an average of around £50,000 worth of debt at the end of their studies, but higher for, um, for lower income students. Um, and interestingly, um, in terms of uh, people's perceptions of textbook costs and uh, materials, we know that from a survey that was carried out um, that over 80% of students in the UK um, surveyed in 2012, which is obviously quite a while ago, um, said that they would like textbooks to be provided for free by their institutions. So as part of um, the course fees that students are paying, um, uh, most students would like to see um, materials provided um, by their institution. And um, that has actually happened actually in some universities um, when we looked into that. Okay, just very briefly, um, a bit of an overview of the UK context, just to, this is really just the slide to show you that actually we've got different um, tuition fee costs within um, different regions in the UK. So um, that was also something to, to bear in mind while we were kind of um, looking at uh, um, the UK context and um, textbook costs and um, tuition fees um, uh, and how the student loan system differs as well, uh, depending on which region you're based in. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit um, about OpenStax. I'm sure um, you guys are um, probably familiar with OpenStax. So um, OpenStax kind of published their first uh, textbook in um, June 2012, and um, uh, over 3 million students have used their textbooks since they published um, their first book. Um, they've saved students millions of dollars and a number of institutions, both in um, North America, but also worldwide, have adopted OpenStax textbooks. I think there's around 30 of them um, currently, largely in STEM subjects, um, and aligned to the US curriculum, as I mentioned um, earlier. But they have done um, uh, some work in Poland in the last few years um, with Catalyst Education to release um, a look at um, uh, uh, producing um, Polish uh, language open textbooks as well. So this was one of the partners that we collaborated with as a part of the project and kind of replicated the way that they um, engage um, uh, educators um, and, and showcase their textbooks. And I'll come and uh, talk to you a little bit about what we did and how we did that in a minute. Um, we also worked with uh, the Open Textbook Network, um, which I'm sure some of you are familiar um, with as well. So. Um, this is uh, an organization that has institutional membership. Um, they have more than 600. I think it's actually quite a bit more than that now. There's, but there's certainly over 600 plus institutions and members of this network. Um, they kind of provide access to an open textbook library, um, which has over 460 open textbooks. And through this, they've kind of, um, uh, there's been 8.5 million uh, dollars plus worth of student savings. So the idea um, behind uh, collaborating with the Open Textbook Network was to replicate um, their workshop, uh, the workshops that they conducted. So um, what would happen is you'd go into an institution, a member of the network, and you'd run a, a, a workshop introducing people to open textbooks and to OER and encouraging people to review one of the textbooks that's in the library. So it says, obviously, here, 60% of these textbooks have at least one review. Um, the idea is it's encouraging educators to review um, textbooks in their discipline um, 
uh, means that there's feedback. You know, you can see what other educators have said about the quality of the of the books. Obviously, yeah. quality is um, one of the kind of uh, concerns sometimes that people have around um, OER and around open textbooks. So trying to kind of mitigate um, against that kind of criticism. And then also the um, just under half of all educators that participate in the workshop go on to adopt um, an open textbook from the open textbook library. So if you go and have a look at the kind of um, books that these guys have got, they're open stacks books and books from um, other places, BC campus, for example, um, and other kind of textbooks are all kind of available and categorized um, on that platform. So yeah, we work with the open textbook network uh, to, to, to also replicate their model. So two, um, two kind of different models and different approaches to, um, to introducing people to open uh, textbooks. So what did we actually do? Um, over the course of a year, so it was quite, the initial phase of this project was quite rapid. Basically within a year, we kind of um, uh, um, conducted a series of workshops and did a series of promotional events. Um, so as part of our work with OpenStax, we kind of um, had a session with Dan, Danny, uh, who you can see in the bottom uh, right hand corner here, um, Danny Nicholson and also Daniel Williamson of OpenStax. Um, and these guys came, they spent time with us um, and we then kind of learned more about the way in which they, they, uh, they um, present the books to people. So you can see myself and my colleague Rob um, in the top right hand corner there. Um, showcasing some of the STEM textbooks. And we focused on STEM specifically in this project. So um, for a number of different reasons, but um, we showcased a range of, of STEM textbooks. Um, you know, obviously there's content transferability um, by focusing on STEM. It's the basis for many subjects, um, high enrollment subjects as well. Um, and there's a need for STEM graduates in the UK, um, obviously as elsewhere. So we focused on STEM specifically, um, showcasing biology, physics, astronomy and chemistry books. Um, and basically we ran these stands at seven um, events across the UK. Um, these were kind of range of different things from librarian events to um, to uh, STEM teachers at different levels, all kinds of things. Um, and we would get to encourage people to sign up to find out more about OpenStax and the textbooks as part of that, um, of, of part of promoting um, uh, the materials. Um, and this led to a series of very um, interesting, as you can imagine, conversations with educators, not just about the kind of cost of textbooks, um, but their experiences um, with textbooks and also just hearing people, um, people's feedback around the concept of open textbooks and OER, particularly if people were unfamiliar um, with that. And I'll kind of uh, talk a little bit more and um, show you some of the kind of feedback that we had from people um, throughout, uh, throughout those, those um, events shortly. Um, Okay, great. So once people were signed up, just to mention what would happen is you'd receive a series of emails, um, which would kind of um, uh, encourage you to explore um, books in your subject area and so on. So people would sign up to receive more information. Okay, so simultaneously, while we were um, uh, carrying out these events, which were largely kind of towards the end of 2018, which is um, a little while ago now, but the events were kind of largely contained then. Um, we also kind of um, carried out 14 workshops at eight different institutions across the UK. So we kind of went on a little bit of a tour. Um, we recruited um, folks through uh, mailing lists, kind of reached out to kind of interested people. Obviously we couldn't replicate the membership model that the Open Textbook Network uh, used. Um, but we had an introductory session. Dave Ernst came over from the Open Textbook Network and we kind of um, made some tweaks to um, the slide decks. It was more applicable to the kind of UK context. Um, there's some of these decks on SlideShare, so I'll share that um, link uh, shortly. But it was really a kind of 101 um, session to kind of introduce people to um, the concept of open textbooks, to open licensing, um, and uh, to just get get people raise people's awareness really around um, open textbooks in their subject area. And I mentioned 
earlier. Um, the aim of these workshops um, was to both do that and encourage people to go and review a, a textbook. And we um, incentivized that. So there was a, a payment for people if they if they did that. So um, in total, we had people from almost 20 universities um, participate in those. And um, yeah, 43 of um, the, the 100 plus staff that participated win academic roles. So we had kind of people, librarians and other people as well, which was great. Um, so you can see some of the pictures from the workshops. Viv Rolf um, uh, from UW was particularly um, leading in this work here. Um, um, we we, we uh, kind of went around and did those sessions at different places. So that was really great. And another really great opportunity for getting feedback. And I'll, I'll report back a little bit about um, uh, what people uh, gain from the workshops in a moment. Lovely. Okay, so um, that gives you a super quick <laughs> whistle top uh, tour of um, what we actually did. So um, now, just very briefly to kind of look at um, some of the outcomes for the from from the project. Um, so we kind of know from um, the work that we've done that we kind of contributed um, to nine known adoptions. We know. It was around, I think, um, it wasn't, pe people were kind of using OpenStax materials. I think there were 16, uh, don't quote me on that. I think it was 16 um, kind of known adoptions, obviously, because it's out there in the open, anyone can come and download um, OpenStax materials from the website. Um, this was people actually telling OpenStax that they'd adopted. I think it was around 16 known UK adoptions before we kind of um, uh, carried out the work for as, as part of this project. Um, there's kind of nine known adoptions um, that are down in whole or part to the work that we did across the projects. Um, and we had 24 additional UK signups um, over the course of the project, in addition to the um, 85, I think it is, uh, signups that we uh, gained through the activity I mentioned earlier. And we also saw a kind of upsurge of UK interest in OpenStack. So we could see um, through web analytics that um, people were going and downloading. Um, uh, materials and viewing the material online in quite substantial kind of numbers, which was great. So um, there was also a number of um, visits from um, the Open Textbook Network uh, website, um, which also could have come about through the workshop work that we were doing. Um, as I mentioned, um, OpenStax materials are available um, as part of the Open Textbook Network library. Um, and this continues. So this is actually quite recent. So I um, uh, still got updates of, of of what's actually happening in terms of the UK picture. So you can see we've got quite a number of people um, who uh, have confirmed that they're going to adopt or that they're going to recommend the books going forward, um, which is fantastic. So um, continuing to kind of monitor the, the, the kind of longer um, impacts of the project. Um, we know that it kind of takes around 19 months for early adopter adoption. Um, uh, for, for OpenStax. So we're kind of monitoring that. So hopefully we'll, we'll um, have further things to report as a result of the project going forward. One of the things that um, was really useful in the project um, and was the kind of, um, and put, kind of one of the best bits, I think, was, was having conversations with the people that we met at these events and at the workshops. And this was really important, um, particularly, although we were focused on higher education, we actually got quite important insights into um, what folks thought in other sectors. So um, this is an example of someone working in a college in further education, talking about the um, government cuts, which have impacted on um, people's ability to buy materials. Um, so this person here that we did a brief interview with um, at the event, I think this was up in Liverpool, um, and uh, they were kind of talking about the cost of textbooks and how um, there's not enough money for materials. And that as on this side says here that, you know, there's a real um, potential for OpenStax to kind of potentially help with that in terms of being able to edit the books together um, and make them more relevant. So having that ability, um, because of OpenStax books, I think they're by and large on the CC BY license. So obviously you can remix and reversion them for your own context and so on. So someone 
from being able to view the hard copy of the books. So I think this was another really good point. People kind of really liked the fact that you could go pick up a textbook and you actually could flick through it and look at different bits of it. So we'd have some really interesting conversations with people around this. People would come up, grab the book, have a look, and it was like, oh, okay, you have got that in there, or, um, oh, I can see how I can use this with this group of students, and maybe something else with another group of students. So it was very um, interesting um, to, to and, and really valuable to actually have physical copies of the books there um, as a way of a, a kind of conversation starter um, with people. Um, so that was really good. Um, and this is one of a number of, um, this was an interview, I think it's in a different um, place, but there's a number of case studies that we developed with people. Um, and so, for example, in Sunderland, um, where we did do one of the workshops, um, we spoke with people uh, who work um, with PGCE students, and there's a kind of double burden of material and textbook costs for these guys, because they're buying um, stuff specifically related to their PGCE course, and then also for the subject that they're training to be teachers in. So, um, yeah, there were some really interesting kind of insights um, uh, that we had into uh, what was happening um, around the country and in different sectors. Okay, so moving on, um, I'm just gonna check if there's any questions. Feel free to put questions in the chat as well. Um, moving on, so um, I mentioned earlier that uh, we incentivize the review process. So quite about a third of folks that participated in the workshops um, completed a review. And we also surveyed people, and um, a large number of people said they intended to adopt an open textbook, um, and that included all 13 of the academics that um, uh, filled out the survey. So they said they'd either consider adopting or, or might adopt an open textbook, um, which was great. Um, and this was a good outcome, in, um, slightly lower than the, um, uh, the number of reviews, was slightly lower maybe than the open textbook network. Uh, kind of average but um, pretty good because we didn't really have institutional support in the same way you would have if you were going in and if, to a member organisation so we were kind of going in through this route of people inviting us and, and kind of doing it that way. Um, and there was a kind of mixed level of understanding of OER and open textbooks. I mentioned we had librarians um, come along um, and it usually you know these guys were pretty up on um, OER uh, and so on, which was great. We had some really kind of um, interesting kind of feedback um, around what people were planning to do. So there's a few kind of quotes here from people uh, who um, participated in the um, in the survey uh, that followed the workshop. So um, I'll just let you have a look at those. So basically. Um, people talking about adding them to recommended module lists um, and how that would um, reduce cost, uh, but then also um, the interactive nature of the textbooks that this person's been reviewing, how that might be beneficial to students, um, people talking about obviously things being needed, uh, needing to be fit for purpose. Um, and then also somebody, as I mentioned, um, that depending on people's roles, um, that it might be that they encourage other people to kind of adopt open textbooks um, as a result of being at the workshop. So um, that was really uh, kind of interesting insights that we gathered from the survey. We also had other kind of feedback here, which um, is interesting. This was carried out by interview and um, by email. Um, and firstly, um, at the top, uh, this person, um, at Glasgow Caledonian University was kind of thinking about how um, how they could sign this kind of material better to um, students and maybe even contributing towards um, uh, an open textbook in the future. That was something that came up quite a bit um, talking to people face to face actually at events um, and kind of people were very keen to kind of be involved in, in the creation of this kind of material and people were quite excited about it particularly people that are totally new to like um, OER, um, um, there were some really, really cool conversations that we had with people, um, which was fantastic. Um, we've also got a quote here from someone at Staffordshire um, where we did a workshop um, and they've added open access text to their reading list and then also gone and spoken to someone in the student union um, and talked a bit more about, about 
OER with them. So that was also a really excellent kind of um, uh, impact that the project had um, through the work that we, we were doing. Uh, and you can find out a bit more on the website, um, on the UK Open Textbooks website, we've got an impact page where you can read some more of these extended kind of um, comments from folks about um, the impact that the work that we had. Um, Okay, cool. So we kind of had a kind of add on phase um, to the project. So we kind of extend the project a bit and we had the opportunity to carry out um, a, uh, a survey with educators. So this was led by my colleagues, Bayer and uh, Katie um, uh, Jordan. And um, this was an incentivized survey carried out in September 2018. Um, we had 96 responses um, from across the UK, mainly from people working uh, in HE. So um, across a range of disciplines responded to this survey. And, and the idea behind it was to get a sense of um, how people are using textbooks at the moment um, and awareness of OER and open textbooks. As I mentioned, there's been not a huge amount of research done um, around this, Viv Rolf's done a bit of research into student um, uh, perceptions and experiences of open textbooks, but there's still um, uh, quite a lot more to be done um, around that. So, um, as you can see from the survey findings, um, there's still relatively, and this kind of matches up with what we know from other educator surveys about OER awareness, there's still um, a kind of large number of people um, who are unaware or know very little about open educational resources and about open textbooks. Um, but on the plus side, um, we discovered that actually people are quite receptive um, to uh, the potential for using um, open textbooks in the future. So you can see um, a bit of the survey here um, where a large number, I think it's 80% of people strongly agree or um, agree strongly agree or agree with the statement, I will consider using open textbooks in the future um, and that students should have access to, to this type of resource. So there's really um, quite a uh, big potential for um, open textbooks within the UK. Um, and this kind of pilot project kind of revealed um, that to us. Um, not just through the conversations that we had, through the survey work that we did, um, through different aspects of, of the project. So um, obviously I mentioned it was a pilot project, so um, there's still lots to be done, and um, hopefully we can continue um, some of that work um, in the future. Um, we've got a report that's out, so we recently published this report. So um, if you do want to go and find out more about what we did in the project, um, about the impact that we had, um, and about the outcomes from the project and the recommendations, and I'll talk a little bit about those in a moment. Um, we have a report that's out um, available on the UK Open Textbooks website um, that was released earlier in the year. Um, and I just want to kind of briefly go through some of the recommendations that came out of that uh, report. Um, so as I kind of mentioned, um, in terms of um, recommendations in relation to higher education, um, we found that this type of activity, replicating um, uh, these kind of models, was was really successful in the UK context um, for different different um, uh, obviously are quite different models. One is going into an institution, and the other one um, showcasing open textbooks to to people at events. They're quite different ways of, of of approaching and engaging with educators. Both of them really valuable um, and. Um, really great for getting uh, engaging with educators, promoting awareness um, of, of open textbooks and OER um, more broadly. Um, kind of built on existing um, knowledge of open access, so people were um, aware of open access um, in particular. Um, uh, and this was a really important kind of starting point for some of the conversations that we had. Um, I mentioned financial savings. Um, obviously, that is an issue, or institutional savings is an issue, but also um, particularly around um, because the textbooks, for example, with, with OpenStax are aligned to US scope and sequence, one of the kind of ways in which um, when we were talking with folks, we'd quite often end up talking um, about 
the uh, the fact that the books were openly licensed and that they enabled um, changes to the material to be made. Um, so that kind of came up quite early on in conversation. Um, we also kind of had, uh, it became apparent that there's um, kind of smaller markets, as it says here in the recommendations, around, for example, Welsh language um, materials or access materials as well, someone um, uh, mentioned, where publishers are maybe not so interested in creating content for these kind of smaller markets. Um, so there's a real potential there for open, um, open textbooks uh, um, uh, in that regard. Um, Kind of mentioned actually um you saw earlier some of the people that attended um the workshops kind of talking about um adding an open textbook to a reading list obviously that's much more lower uh, it doesn't involve so much um uh um it's a, it's a much more lower threshold as it puts here for staff to engage with open textbooks by by doing this um adding an open textbook to a reading list it's fairly kind of um uh easy thing to do rather than totally reorganizing your course so quite a number of people said they would do that which was fantastic um, and then also librarians and our engagement with librarians and the interest that, that um, librarians had um, around open textbooks was really strong so that was fantastic um, in terms of generalized um, generalizing our experience um, um, recommendations um, there's still a lot more research um, to be done, as I mentioned, um, and that's quite an important kind of um, uh, part of what needs to potential next steps um, to, to really understand the use of textbooks, um, particularly student perceptions of, of textbooks. Um, adapting the message as well. So obviously I mentioned we kind of made changes to um, the slide deck in the Open Textbook Network um, to reflect the UK context. Um, our kind of approach to talking about the books was was slightly um, uh, slightly different. Um, I mentioned also the kind of uh, showcasing the actual physical book was a really kind of positive um, uh, thing at events. People liked being able to see um, a, a physical copy of a book. We gave away um, uh, USBs with all of the OpenStax materials on them as well to people. So um, people could take those away and share them with colleagues and, um, and so on. Uh, which was fantastic but um yeah having a physical copy there was a real conversation starter so that was really useful um and then just kind of involving as many stakeholders as possible and having targeted marketing um material uh as well so those are some of the recommendations that come out of the report um we've published lots of uh kind of other things in case you're interested in finding out more um, about the work that um we've been doing for the project uh, we've got a couple of research papers that are coming out as well. So there's a research and education um, uh, paper, as well as um, we're going to be featuring the OEP special issue um, in, I think it's Distance Education Journal. Um, I'll kind of be focusing more on um, uh, the latter. We'll be focusing more on um, the outcomes from the survey as well, but there's um, some of that available in the report. Um, but yeah, there's these other uh, resources and publications from the project to check out as well. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in finding out more, that's the place to go. Okay, so just in the final stages of what we're um, doing, I think we've already kind of um, covered these points really. So um, yes, I kind of mentioned we need to kind of carry on looking at the kind of long to medium term impacts of the project. So those are starting to filter through now, particularly in terms of adoption. Um, I mentioned reusability and that kind of being foregrounded in discussions. Um, and the fact that this was really, um, I think personally, the, the opportunity to go out and speak to educators, librarians and colleagues, both in their own institutions, events, I found so um, valuable. Um, it, it was it was really um, excellent. So that was really valuable as well. Getting out there and talking to people and hearing their experiences was, was just fantastic. So. Um, we also had high levels of interest in different kind of activities. We kind of saw people um, talking about adding um, open textbooks to reading lists, um, but also people talked about creating um, textbooks at their own institutions. We also had people um, talking about co-creation of content and then also some senior level support as well, um, which was coming through at some institutions, um, which was great to see. Um, 
terms of next steps um, and recommendations, um, talked a lot about recommendations a moment ago. Obviously, the report is out now, so they're all kind of in there. Um, but yeah, I think it would be really good to get a bigger um, picture. We obviously carry out a survey with um, with um, a small number of HE uh, educators, largely in, in um, England, I think. Um, but we need to kind of find out more about the student experience and what impact textbook costs are having. As I mentioned earlier, we know um, that students um, uh, are impacted or would like to see there's, there's kind of signs that that students um that textbook and material costs are a concern to students but they, we really need to do further research um to that um i think also just to note actually i forgot to mention this one of the things actually um about uh showcasing kind of books that were developed for US scope and sequence as in the case of OpenStax um, was that getting people to kind of look at them um, quite sometimes you would find people saying um, how they could use these books to stretch students so something like college physics um, it kind of spans university and college A levels here so it's kind of applicable to different groups of um, educators and different groups of students um, so it was really interesting to get feedback about how um uh different groups of students could use different bits of the, of the textbooks um so just a comment on that as well so um yes so that's just kind of a brief um whistle stop tour i think of what we did as um as part of the project um so thank you for listening um if i don't know if anyone's got any questions or comments or things that they wanted to share um I'll just have a quick drink while you uh, have a think a second. I can see a couple of you guys, a couple of folks typing things. Go for it, go for it, Helen. Hmm. So while you guys are typing, actually everyone's typing, which is great. So will we ever have one? Okay. Challenges of signing to one. Well, I suppose that's kind of like what the Open Textbook Network Library is trying to do is bring together um, a kind of one-stop shop for uh, for um for open textbooks um in order of kind of discipline um so that kind of acts as a nice kind of i guess a starting point a kind of portal into stuff um but yeah i mean i guess it's the kind of i guess oh, sorry i'm scrolling around i'm losing stuff here um was there a specific, ch I mean, is it just, are you kind of alluding to people being able to find resources more generally, or is it a kind of, because I think quite often people kind of maybe, um, start to ex you kind of explore different so i imagine and i don't know it'd be interesting to hear actually um educator experiences around this around um i mean we know from obviously research that's been carried out that kind of finding oer and therefore something like open textbooks um it can often be kind of difficult to know where to start um so i'm not sure that uh i suppose So yeah, I'll let you clarify that a second, Helen. I'll just have a quick look at Danielle's question here. Um, yeah, so um, Danielle's asked, do any of the open books contain all materials for teaching a course, including assessment, quizzes, etc." So yeah, agreed that people kind of do look for add-on materials. Um, I think probably particularly OpenStax books um, have kind of communities around books um, or there have been communities, or there are um, communities around certain books. 
So something like um, uh, uh, the statistics book um, by Barbara Olowski and Susan Dean, for example, um, quite often educators have shared back the materials that they've created that are related to a textbook, so test banks um, and so on. People are kind of sharing back these things, so you kind of build up um, resources um, connected to um, uh, particular textbooks that kind of happens over time but I think it is kind of very much um, it kind of depends some books might not have those some books do some books have got more interactivity I think it's very much dependent on um, on who's produced that 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 book but I'd agree that you know people do like to have everything um, uh, to have these kind of additional resources that they can use um, quite often um, and that that's an advantage in, in some uh, cases because you can just take everything and run with it rather than having to create stuff around it. Yeah, so Helen, I, I think if you go and check out the Open Textbook Network um, library, you'll see that it's kind of by discipline and you can kind of search. It will be, um, it's a kind of good jumping off point, it kind of includes lots of the big kind of um, players, OpenStax, BC Campus and their books are all in there, kind of ordered by um, um, by discipline. So it's a kind of good place to start, I think. So I'm just scrolling down. Okay, so Trish says, um, talks about tapping into other communities and how this is a really good idea. I, I, I think it's incredibly valuable, actually. I, I just really exciting to get out and actually talk to it sounds like i'm in the office all the time but like what i mean is going out and talking to, to people face to face at events and getting an insight into things like fe um further education teachers and stuff i just yeah I, it was just fantastic um and that's also really great to to hear that you find open textbooks invaluable um yes and that reminds me actually one of the things um that somebody did mention is that um what this kind of resource particularly they were looking at the astronomy book they were saying well i have to teach this but i don't um necessarily i'm not completely up to speed in the subject area um so something like an open textbook can provide educators uh, with a reminder and a refresher um around um uh certain disciplines and topics so Oop. yes uh Yes, always up for talking about doing more um, uh, workshops at institutions. And yeah, please get in touch. Um, uh, we've also the slide decks all up on SlideShare. So um, if you search for, um, it should be ones up on the hub, but there's definitely ones up on my personal SlideShare of the, the um, decks that we used um, at the at the, the workshop, as part of the workshops that I mentioned. So um, you can kind of see uh, what we kind of do in in the workshops, but yeah, I'm happy to kind of um, uh, talk talk more about that. Um, and it's a question also about gaining institutional support. You know, I would use them if I had support. Do you know where the support is there? Good question. Um, I think. Hmm. I'm not sure we have enough um, insight into that at the moment. I think it's highly variable. Is my impression. Um, uh, support for um, kind of using uh, more open materials or, or kind of um, reducing textbook costs. There's a couple of universities that I'm aware of in the UK where um, textbook costs are included as part of the course um, or that universities have kind of looked at ways to address material burden. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about the sorry, that's not a very good answer. Um, I'll endeavour to find out more though. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, thanks, Danielle. So this is from um, OpenStax talking about the 19 months from introduction to adoption. So I think, so probably OpenStax are the authority really on, um, on this, but um, I think what they're referring to is the first introduction to a textbook. So say at one of their events, you know, somebody comes over, sees their stand, um, has the opportunity to look at the textbook. Um, they might sign up for the newsletter, um, or at least they know where the books are. So probably the next likelihood um, is that um, uh, 
they um, go away and take a further look at the material in depth and see if it's right for their students and kind of think about how they're going to um, potentially use that resource. And I think it probably um, is referring to the point at which you actually um, you're adopting the book, so you're using it with your students. So it could be, um, and I'd need to clarify actually um, this, but we're talking about adoption, so they're going to be using it with their students um, as a primary uh, um, re resource um, as part of their course. So I guess it's the time from introduction to thinking about how you can utilise it within your, your course and the process that you go through to, to, to make changes to the course. So I think that's what's being referred to there. Lovely. So yeah, drop us a line, Helen. Um, that would be fantastic. And then um, a print copy as well. Yeah, it's really useful. So I mean, we've got some, I'm not sure where you're um, based, but um, we've certainly got some here that we can probably lend you. Um, that's all right. And thank you very much for participating. Um, and please just drop me a line so it's um, as well, or, or tweet or DM me on Twitter or something. So I hope that's answered people's questions. Um, and uh, yes, there's more research to be done, as always, with these things. So um, yeah, well, hopefully we can um, we'll get the opportunity to feedback on longer term impacts and um, and so on at another point. But I hope that's been useful. Um, and I'll just wait for you guys to finish typing in case there's anything else you want to share. Good question. Um, hmm, that is a good question. So I know that OpenStax on their um, on their kind of remix platform, uh, where you can there's different versions of the books there, so you can see how you know different versions where people have, have adapted them. But actually, based on outside of that, that's a good question. I'm not sure it's quite at the stage of where I think you might be indicating, which is where there's kind of maybe one place where you can see uh, probably the best one. I'll try and find the, let me just look for the open stats. Um, I'll pop this in the chat box. So I'm just going to, here we are. <clears throat> I haven't looked at this for a little while, so apologies. Um, so here we are. So you can, oops, gosh. So I'll pop this in the box and this might answer your question, hopefully. So that link takes you to um, OpenStax's kind of area where you can um, kind of make changes and see what other folks have kind of done um, to the materials. So that's their kind of way of, um, that's one way that it's being currently done. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure about in terms of like country or region wise. So um, I'll have to look into that. That's a good point. So um, yeah, I'm sorry I can't answer in more depth on that, but that is a good point. Um, because it would be helpful unless unless folks are sharing it back on platforms like CNX connections, then it's kind of, you know, it's not always obvious. Um, so yeah, it's a good point. I'll look into that. Yeah, yeah thanks, Trish. I think that's a really, um, it really helped. The open licensing is obviously <laughs> super important um, in the discussions, as I mentioned. And um, and people could really immediately see the possibilities with stuff just by being able to look in the books, kind of think about their learners and their needs, kind of could see what changes they could make, um, see the quality of the material as well. Um, so yeah, it was really valuable. And um, and of course, it's a complete um, uh, course. 
uh, in a way. So obviously you can pick that up and run with it as is and cherry pick bits and kind of mix and match. So it's all really kind of um, useful um, material. Okay, so thanks so much for the interesting questions. Um, there's some really good food for thought for me to go away and find out more as well about different um, aspects of that. So I really appreciate all the questions from folks. Um, we're about eight minutes to the hour. So um, unless anyone's got any other thoughts or things that they wanted to share. That's all right. No, thank you guys for um, coming. And um, oh, before we forget, or before I forget rather, um, the next GoGM webinar is Wednesday the 7th of August. So um, we're going to be having a research drop-in session with Martin. And um, so basically just an opportunity to drop by um, and you can, in the interim, you can tweet your questions and the topics to discuss. And Martin will be on hand to, to um, talk with everybody then. So um, you can tweet him at mweller. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll join you again in, in, in August. So um, thanks ever so much. Um, I will put this recording available online shortly. Um, that's my slide share um, address. So you can find some of the um, workshop slides available there. Um, you can also tweet me and email me. Um, and find out more about the project as well um, and all the resources I mentioned um, earlier uh, are available via the link at the top. So thanks ever so much for um, coming along today and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the session and thank you very much. So thank you. Bye. <laughs>